Never worry about passing another nursing school exam ever again. Head over to simplenursing.com forward slash YouTube to join for free. Hey, nursing students. I know that preparing for the NCLEX can be downright stressful, especially with all those new scary NGN style questions. But don't worry. Today, I'm going to break down each question style type so that you know exactly how to best tackle them during your NCLEX exam. With each NGN style, we will also work on an example together to test your knowledge and to get comfortable with the new process. You see, the new generation NCLEX, or simply the NGN, has six different styles of question. These include drag and drop, drop down, multiple choice, multiple response, highlight, and even bow tie style questions. And each style of questions has additional subcategories. Now, I know it can be very scary, so let's break down each one. Next, we have our drop down style questions. Now, there are three types in this category. The first type is the drop down table item type. This includes one sentence with one cause and one effect, or one sentence with one cause and two effects. The second is the drop down rationale item type. This will include one sentence with one cause and one effect, or one sentence with one cause and two effects. Questions will either appear with one sentence plus two drop downs or one sentence with three drop downs. And also, there can be three to five options per drop down, so it can be very scary. But let's dive into an example and let me show you how to navigate this. This question is asking us to complete the following sentence by choosing from the list of options. The problem here is suspected drug diversion and nurse impairment. So for the solution, before looking at the options, think about considerations related to suspected drug diversion, or basically drug abuse, and nursing impairment. Well, number one, it can result in client harm. Well, obviously, we don't want a high nurse taking care of patients. So impaired nurses can be unsafe in their judgment and even clinical practice. And number two, we have a potential for clients to experience increased and even unrelieved pain since the nurse has taken all their pain medication. Okay, now let's look at the actual question here. So based on the current information, clients who receive care from the staff nurse are at highest risk for blank as evidenced by blank. So now let's look at the options here. These clients are at highest risk for blank. Will it be unrelieved pain? Well, yes, this is correct. Client's pain is not addressed since that nurse has taken all their pain medication. Now the rest of the options in column one are incorrect because dissatisfaction, even though a real concern, is not the biggest top priority or really a safety concern. Neither is sepsis. The meeting notes indicate a mishandling of narcotics, or basically pain meds, and really not antibiotics. Now, what is this unruly pain evidenced by? Is it evidenced by or satisfaction survey scores? Well, no, this is incorrect. It's not indicated from the clinical data. What about the reuse of syringes and needles? Well, no, again, there's no evidence to support this. So the correct option here is not receiving prescribed pharmacotherapy, because once again, the staff member is stealing their medication, so this nurse is stealing their pain medications rather than giving it as ordered. Now, moving on to the third type, the drop-down close item type. These questions will present you with a paragraph of information and one or more drop-down options to complete the paragraph. So, here's an example. This question is asking us to complete the following sentence by choosing from the list of options. The problem here is the HCP orders related to the infected pressure injury. So for the solution, before looking at the options, think about safety. Number one is culture the wound first before giving antibiotics. Then we apply wound care. Number two is frequent skin assessments. And the last one here is reposition frequently as well as increase fluids. Okay, now that we brainstormed, let's dive into the options here. The question's asking, the nurse must first blank followed by blank. But if you were to ask me, the nurse must first grab some wine followed by a back massage. All right, but serious, the nurse must first blank. So let's look at response one. Are we gonna culture the dorsocluteal wound? Well, yes, this is priority because it determines the causing factor of the infection. Now, the rest of the options in column one are incorrect because we're not gonna administer the IV antibiotics. This should only be done after the culture is performed. And we're not gonna consult with the wound care nurse because this is not the priority or that first initial action it should always be to culture the wound. So now that we know that we must first culture that wound, what are we gonna follow up doing? Well, the correct answer here in option two 
is administer the IV antibiotic. This directly addresses the wound infection. And the rest of the options are incorrect, and let me explain why. Inserting an indwelling urethral catheter, fancy words for a Foley, this action does not address the infected pressure injury. And the last option is incorrect because simply administering zinc 20 milligrams by mouth is not the thing to do. We're simply giving the client a vitamin and the client needs antibiotics. Thanks for watching today's video. Remember to type simplenursing.com forward slash YouTube into your search bar and join well over 1 million students hacking their nursing school system.